Boy, we had some massive rain last night. Look at this county road right here. Yesterday and last night, both actually. We're coming up, I'm following Kevin right now. We're coming up on the uh, woods road right where we turn in at. And I'll show you how we, how we do this. I'm finna pass Kevin, watch this. All right, I'm gonna try to do this and hold the camera and shift gears all at the same time. We'll see how this is gonna work. We'll watch what Kevin has to do here. It's a hairpin turn, man. So he's gonna do that, and I'm gonna do this. And go right on in. Cause he can't make that turn without backing up. This is Tuesday morning. Raining again today. Yeehaw! Creeks up a little bit. I like riding up this road, man. A road. Chasing after Kevin. Let's see what we can do. We ran all day yesterday in the rain. Get her done again today. That's what I'm talking about. Be busting them quotas wide open, boy. A lot of people didn't work yesterday, couldn't run. Let's see what we can do. So there's another one loaded. It is raining. It's a good steady rain. Now you see all the rain on the door there hitting us that. I just loaded right there with a load of double bump pine put wood. Takes a lot of those tops to make a load, man. There's a bunch of those jokers on there. You can see the rain, what it's looking like. He's wiping his windows off now. Get to rolling and get his defroster running now. Tooting the horn, we always toot the horns when the truck takes off. That's one of the requirements that we have to do. That lets everybody know on the ground that the truck is fixing to roll. Keep you from running over somebody or should. Last time I looked at uh, 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 Daniel, when that uh, horrible. So heading on to the mill. Okay, the truck. I probably had more questions to ask about the truck than I have anything else, and then. After this part, then we're going to get into the uh, end of the giveaway for the t-shirts. Since I passed uh, 15,000 subscribers, today's video didn't have a lot of action in it or anything like that, and that's fine. Uh, today marks two more weeks they've had it at the dealer. So they had it 23 days already, and then another 14 days now. So it's 37 days total for those of you who are trying to keep up with it. Uh, been on the phone with Dodge uh, three times now. They called me and uh, they had a lady call the first time and I talked to her and then she called back the second time. I was pretty ugly to her the second time. But of course, I mean, if you, you know, if you send somebody to me to talk to me about something, I don't care whether you're a man or a woman or not. If you're there to do the job, I'm not going to talk to you any different just because you're a woman. You better be prepared to hear what I got to say. And and that's just the way it is. I don't, I don't hold back. You know what I mean? I was pretty ugly to her the second time. And then the third time i had a guy call and i pretty much eat him up i mean just eat, you know i told him both just give me another truck you know just give me another truck which that's not what they want to do that's not what they want to do uh the truck is back in tupelo i do know that that's all i know I, the only reason i know that is because one of our truck drivers seen my truck up there when they were going to hankins with a load so my truck is in tupelo again what they're doing to it, I have no idea. Uh, I just, I, and a lot of people have pointed this out. I can't believe that uh, Dodge is allowing this to happen like this. They've been waiting on uh, an engineer to come in and fix it, you know, and all that. Bottom line is, I'm not going to keep the truck. It's whatever. I've talked to some people in the know, and what we have to do is basically sue uh, Chrysler Dodge and make them buy the truck back. And 
whatever else, you know. So, and don't even ask me what I'm going to go with. That's irrelevant right now. Let's just cross this hurdle with this truck first and get it back to them. Then we'll worry about what I'm going to get. And uh, so, I mean, that's just useless to ask me, you know, or somebody say, buy Ford, buy Chevrolet, whatever. Y'all should see some of the emails that I've gotten from people. Horror stories. And it doesn't matter. I'm going to read y'all a comment here in a minute. It doesn't matter whether it's Ford, Chevrolet, GMC, Dodge, who it is. There are all horror stories. The only thing that you can hope and pray for when you go to buy a vehicle, and it doesn't matter whether it's a truck, a car, what it is, you just better pray that you get a good one, is all I'm telling you. I mean, that's, that's it in a nutshell. You know, people piping up all the time saying, you know, I'll do this and I'll do that and all. Well, it costs money to do this and do that. You know what I mean? And it's not that easy to do this and do that. And here's the other thing too. My truck is not, I don't own my truck personally. TDK Login owns my truck. So all that has to go into place to make everything click. I had one comment, though, that came in out of, uh, well, Monday a week ago. Let me give you all these stats here. Monday a week ago, <clears throat> the videos that were up then had already done 147,100 views and had 2,415 comments on it. Now, why Dodge is allowing just to get bashed like that, I have no idea. And there's so many people, these videos sway, can sway so many people. I mean, man, the media, the YouTube, that's where it's at. I mean, people, people start doing research and they start looking. They go to YouTube first and foremost, and they go to Google or anything like that. And you get somebody like me, firsthand experience, man, it just kills them on a sale. I have one comment right here that came in. This is the best comment I've got right here. <clears throat> and it's from a guy named Lee Barnes. I don't know if that's his real name or not. I have no idea. And he says, I do have to wonder why you think you've married yourself to this particular vehicle. How much it cost you to drive it where you bought it and move all your stuff into the same, same model, only a different truck? Seriously, how much? More than you will pay to get this one fixed. That's not an option, unfortunately. So let them own it. And you own another one that does work. Somewhere on the assembly line, this one was damaged in the wiring harness and Lord only knows where. They can't all be bad. So how much more is it going to cost me to move into a new truck is the question to be asked. You can only expect more of the same disappointing service that I've gotten to date. And that's uh, that comment right there. I saved it and I go back and I read it. And that comment is so true. For some reason in our history, with what we do, we have, when we've got something, we've always just been married to it. We bought a brand new tree cutter from John Deere in 1997. The first when they come out, that was the first year they come out with the 843s. They've been building the 643s forever. Then they came out with the 843, a little bit bigger cutter and everything. Got it. Had a short in the wiring harness. Us and the dealer could not find that short in the wiring harness. We did everything, and we could not find that short in the wiring harness. And that's probably what's wrong with this truck, too. There's so many things that all have to mesh together electronically in all these vehicles that if one little thing don't work, it throws the whole thing off. Well, on that cutter we had, I mean, they just had to put a whole new wiring harness on it. We spent uh, about two days an entire wiring harness. I'm talking about the whole thing you know those big giant den connectors that, that screw in that are about that big around 
and the wires that go in them are about like that and just got you know probably a hundred wire just unreal amount of wires in them i mean we had to replace the whole thing i mean that's just and i thought man we do this this machine ain't never gonna be right but that was a thing to do because we never had no more trouble with the machine there at all but we have always just toughed it out like with my dad trading or getting out of something is not an option with him. I have no idea why. I don't know. But that's just the way it is. Me personally, when I've had trouble with stuff, I don't care if I end up having to do something and lose some money. Just like this guy right here said, just get freaking out of it. you know? Because my thing is, I need something that's dependable. Period. Bottom line. End of story. I need something that is dependable that I can jump in and if I want to go to freaking California, I can drive out there and I know I'll make it back. Sure, you're going to have little maintenance stuff and crap like that that goes on. I need a big truck. I have a 28-foot dual tandem gooseneck that I pull. That's why I need a truck. I had a lot of people ask me, why you need such a big truck? It doesn't matter why I need a big truck. It's my truck. If I want to drive an 18-wheeler, I'll drive a freaking 18-wheeler. You know what I mean? What does it matter if I drive? What does it matter to, to anybody if I drive you know, a Toyota or whatever. I mean, that's my deal. That's what I want to drive. But bottom line, I want something that's dependable. I cannot express to y'all enough, those of y'all who are right here in our area, West Alabama, East Mississippi, North Mississippi, all the way to Tennessee State Line, all the way down to Meridian, do not, and I repeat, do not go to Carl Hogan Automotive. They have... They have the Dodge, the Chrysler, GMC, Chevrolet. They have Toyota. They have freaking Honda. They have everything right there. Uh, why these automobile manufacturers have done what they've done, all these little dealers and put them out of business and where they have these mega dealers, that is slowly coming back to haunt these manufacturers is what's happening. It's stupid. When you ride by out there on 45 where Carl Hogan is, there's a sign out there hiring all positions. They, ain't, they I mean, they ain't got nobody. I mean, if you need some brakes or a gum oil change or something like that, sure, they can fix you up like it. I was, I was standing there the other day. Uh, I drove the truck with them uh, last Monday, a week ago, and there was a woman just raising cane. Her check engine light was on, and they had their... Um, their customer relations guy out there trying to smooth things over with her. And I just looked at the ground and shook my head. I was like, you know, there's a poor lady. And she asked him, she said, would you drive that car all the way to California? She asked him that. Not just a nice, they look be in her 60s, you know, dressed real nice, you know, and everything. And it wasn't, it was just a normal car, you know? And... And he was trying to explain to her, you know, just giving her a bunch of BS, you know what I mean, you know. But don't go buy one there. Because, I mean, you should not be able to allow to sell something that you can't work on. And so, I don't know if they'll fix it or not, you know, whether we end up, what, what happens, I have no idea. But uh, we'll see, you know... And I hadn't given any updates because, uh, you know, didn't have anything to give. But, uh, okay, t-shirt giveaway right quick. <clears throat> All right, comment down below if you want, want to take, if you comment, period, you're going in the drawing for a t-shirt, right? Okay, simple enough. Sunday morning, I'm going to do a random comment picker, and I'm going to run probably five, I'm going to pull five names from it on the comment picker. And I'll comment back to you in the comments. If I don't hear something back from you in 24 hours, I'm going to pick somebody else. Just plain and simple. Uh, on, when I come, when I, I'll tell you you've won a t-shirt, I've only got larges and extra larges, all I got. And so, and I'll, I'll ship some guns to you and get them out to you. Uh, I've had a, uh, so that's all you got to do to win a t-shirt. Just comment and that's going to run from, from to date when this video post uh, to, um, Saturday night, midnight, when it's in a roll over into Monday, and then I'm going to do the comment picker. I've had a uh, good, good, good uh, response on the old videos and stuff like that. So I've got 
be looking for more of them. I've got 246 videos I've got saved that were like um, 2008 and back. I mean, old stuff, you know. So I've had a great, great response on that. The one with Anna Kate that I did post, published today with the Maytag dryer and stuff like that. Good stuff. So y'all hang in there. Appreciate y'all following me along. Subscribe to my stuff if you like my stuff. And you know, um, YouTube, of course, Cotton Three, uh, Twitter, Instagram, both of those are Cotton Top Three also, one T. And let's keep this train rolling. We'll see y'all later. Later, taters.